Hello, Andrew. How are you going? Good. Great. How are you, Lawrence? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. So for those who don't know, this is Andrew. He's actually my student, Erin, who is nine. Yes. Nine years old. Mm -hmm. And now her younger sister, Sophie, is also learning from me. So I'm very excited to do a little podcast with Andrew. So first off, Andrew, how old are you? I am 42. 42. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I asked him before the podcast if I could ask him his age because I want parents to, to know just in case maybe you might be thinking, oh, okay, we're around the same age. Mm. You know, stuff that Andrew is saying is very relatable yeah. to their everyday lives. And I think that is probably the average age of a muso parent, you know. Actually, I probably need to correct myself. I'm 43. 43, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Just realized, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, birthday's just gone, 43. Yeah, so <laughs> grandma's listening somewhere. His, his mom is listening somewhere going, no, you lied. <laughs> you lied about your age, how dare you? Yes. Mm. So today's topic is how to be a good parent. Mm. Uh, I love this topic because it's super, super subjective. Yeah, very much. Which is good for content, obviously. But mm. of course, it's also good because that's what Muso is preaching about. And I want to hear your perspective because a lot of our fans know Aaron. Yeah. Now, we saw that in Malaysia. <laughs> we were on a Malaysia tour and there were teachers taking photos with Aaron when they saw her yeah. because they, they've seen the videos <laughs> and they go, oh, Aaron, the giggly cute girl, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I want to hear it from you. Erin mm. is good at piano, mm -hmm. yet she loves it. Mm. So in your mind, what is the best kind of parenting style in terms of how hard to push the kid mm. or how to be fun with them at the same time? Mm. It, it is it is difficult at times, um, and it's a it's a balancing act at the end of the day um, with children, especially um, children within that age range, that sort of eight to ten age range. Age range um, a little bit of discipline has to be instilled. So in terms of piano, hours of practice, how frequently she practices, that definitely has to be instilled. Mm. Um, the balancing act really is around you know, how much is enough and then how much is too much in terms of, of a practice. If, right. if she's struggling, um, whether or not it's time to take a break, come back to it. Um, and uh, also introducing an element of fun and sort of taking cues from what, um, what you normally do at lessons. Right, so you actually apply what I do at lessons yeah. into... Yeah. Really? Yeah. So the, 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 I didn't know that. Okay. The, 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 uh, the throwing uh, soft toy games. So you, you throw soft toys yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've, got, we've got like, uh, you know, a, a lost count of how many we've put on top of the piano. Right. Because it's an upright piano, so we can yeah. literally put stuff on it. So we've got soft toys on top uh -huh. where we sort of lob at her sometimes. You know? <laughs> she likes it. Yeah, she loves it. <laughs> oh, it's something, right. that's, it. That, that's the thing that she's familiar with, and that's what kind of keeps it fun. And, wow, okay. And that, that helps, that helps. What about drilling? So drilling mm. is one of those topics where a lot of kids, you know, even myself, I didn't like to drill. Yeah. If I make a mistake, you know, and I'm told I have to drill it 10 times, mm. and I go like, oh. Does Aaron have a bit of that sometimes? Like, yes, absolutely. Oh, why? Like, I'm like, <laughs> no, I don't want to drill. Ah. I, I, I think the basic rule is, if it's written in the lesson notes that there has to be a three-time drill or a five-time drill at a specific section because she's not good at it, then no questions asked. The questions start coming up if... If it's not written. If it's not written, one. And if after what's written, she's still making mistakes and I try to push her to do more, she'd be like, I've already done it. Correct. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Lawrence said five. Why? Lawrence said five. Why did I do another time? And then sometimes when you say, oh, because it's still not good. And then you say, oh, Lawrence. I don't know if she said it, but when I was young, I would have said, I may have said something about my teacher, something said my teacher. Then, oh, it doesn't work. You know, it's already written there. I did it. You know, it's, yeah, the teacher lied. It doesn't work. But the thing is, that's why I always preach, you know, if, you, if it doesn't work, then mm -hmm. go slower. You know, yes. Create steps, you know. Does she ever do what I just said, or uh, she's, she's starting to? Or she's she started for a while at the beginning, not so much right. because I think it's that element that of age, right? Age, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, right. The, the, the frustration. Oh, I'm playing at this speed. Right. Why do I need to go slower? Because I guess the perception is, as you if you go slow, you're not making progression. If you're keeping the same speed, you're good. If you're going faster, better. But if you're going slower, mm mm. It's Not kind of that illusion, right? That, correct. Oh, I'm downgrading myself by correct. doing slow practice. Correct. Correct. Yeah. That, 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 that wrong perception. But then now she'll go, 
okay, this didn't sound right. It was wrong. Okay. Why am I? And then as she sort of thinks it through in her mind slowly, the fingers slow down. That invariably becomes just low practice. Great. And a lot of kids don't do that. They want no, to rush yeah. and bluff through, the, through it. Yes. So the faster they get it done, the faster they go play with the toys. Correct. So Correct. yeah, I find that fascinating. And you'll notice during lessons that a lot of times when she does mess up, usually it's the first or second, second time they make the same mm. mistake. Mm. I usually don't get angry. I'm actually mm. quite cool about it, mm. unless it's before a condition. Okay. Yes. So then I say, all right, this is the, the worst time to <laughs> do it. Like, you should know by now it's competition season. But Correct. generally, I like to not get too upset because mm. I want them to trial and error. Yes. yes. So I actually go, oh, why do you think you made a mistake? And mm. most times, kids will just sit there and go, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, probably, I don't know. And then I'll explain to them. Well, you know, I use physics. You know, oh, imagine you know you're you're walking. You kick your foot. Daddy mm. kicks his foot. He's limping now, right? How do you fix it? You got to go slower. Put more weight into the nose. I like to explain to the kid. Yep. And sometimes I think messing up in a performance mm. is not that bad of a thing. Mm. I had a, a really top student who always obeyed me when it came to doing slow practice or. Separate hands, I'm, I'm so specific, right? When mm -hmm. to use the score, yep. when you're doing slow, yep. how many times, when to memorize. Mm. One time she just decided, I'm good enough. So the week before the performance, I already told her at the previous lesson, look, I can see you slacking off. If you keep it up another week without slow practice, I can guarantee you, and it's very likely, mm. not guarantee, very likely you won't play that well. Mm. She did a massive memory slip mm. in the performance, a massive one, mm. like completely lost. Mm. And then of course her parents got very upset. And then when she came to the lesson, I was going to be angry at her. But then I looked at her and said, what do you learn? And then the parents laughed and said, she went home saying, now I know why Lawrence makes me do all that slow practice. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> I found it so funny. Like, she went home literally saying, oh, so that's why Lawrence makes me do slow practice yeah. <laughs> with the school. I'm like, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm not going to say her name because yeah. You know, yeah. I almost said her name by accident. So, <laughs> important thing was lesson learned. Exactly. Yeah. And since then, she never made the same mistake. Mm, mm. So I'm actually quite pro making mistakes. And even yeah. with our muso team, I'm really, you know, as a leader, I go, I, I like it more when the team makes mistakes mm. in an effort to innovate yeah. versus you just play it safe. You're very obedient and you mm. don't try to innovate. Mm. Don't try to come up with new ideas. Mm. I think the one who makes a mistake in an effort to innovate, they should always you know, get a promotion or get rewarded yeah. in the future. So, yeah. yeah, so I wanted to pick your brain on that mm. about what I just said. Do you agree with what I said, letting the kids try and error? Yeah, no, absolutely. They Not just scream at them every time no. they, <laughs> they uh, mess up. I mean, look, admittedly, I am not going to admit or uh, say that um, I don't scream. <laughs> yeah. Perfectly, you know, absolutely I think every honest. parent should Yeah, I, I, I do, yeah. Be, you know, it's, it's that, you know, Looking, spending time to practice with them or to watch them practice is is a commitment in itself. Right. Um, and then you know we're all human beings at the end of the day. Yes, we're parents, but we're still human beings. Um, there is an element of frustration when you sit there and you don't sort of see the outcomes. You're frustrated not just yourself but for your child as well. Um, That's right. So yeah. there is always that. But again, when's too much? You know, when's it enough? When's it too much? That's that's a really fine line to to um, to to decide on. Do you ever get so frustrated? Let's say you know you guys have been pushing so hard to get a spot correct. Mm -hmm. You've been drilling it yep. ten times the way the teacher has said. Mm. Slow, slowing it down. When it goes fast, you just messes up, and you get so frustrated. But have you ever just went, okay, let's let's save it for a rainy day tomorrow. Let's come yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Take a break because. Um, Learning to play the piano is, um, you know, it's it's a skill for sure, um, and it's not an overnight thing. Um, and if it's a piece that, especially at, at her age, at Erin's age, and at the level that she's at, I don't expect her to know things straight away right. um, because she, she has to learn, and that takes time. So, yes, absolutely. Comes it, when it comes to a point where we can't see any more progress, we've been at the piano for an hour. Yeah, same thing. But it's been an hour. There's no point to continue. I think just let it go. It and, makes yeah. it worse. We, I think at home we kind of um, subscribe to the whole, you've tried, we've seen you put in effort, let's take a break, go to bed, and then let the brain process it, and then come back tomorrow. And it more often than not proves uh, the next day or after the break that it's fixed. I agree. And 
if I had kids, I would do the same thing. Mm. I would, you know, and a lot of times, because I'm an educator, it's gone to a time where I know how to switch on Mm. and be frustrated. And a lot of times when I'm frustrated, I don't let my emotions take over, actually. Mm. It's a bit of an act, (laughs) I realize. Very cool. A bit of an act, I realize. I can just get frustrated and just go, because I can see the kid is zoning out, right? Mm. I feel like it's my... These are the students, I always say. They're not just my students. I treat them like they're my children, right? Mm. So I can see they're zoning out. And I go, if this was my kid, I wouldn't let that pass. So I'll just get frustrated Mm. or act frustrated. (laughs) (laughs) And I'll go, you know, like, Aaron, why can't you do it? You know, you've seen me do it, right? Aaron, why can't you do it? I've told you many times to focus. And straight away, they can get it. Mm. So that's when I know, okay, I I know that's why they weren't doing it well. And Mm. then afterwards, I'll congratulate congratulate them. I'll I'll crack a joke. Yeah. Because a lot lot of the more old school parents, they would go, you see, I told you, you see when you're focused, but I'm like, you see, I told you, (laughs) you know, ha ha ha. I knew you weren't focused. And they'll go, oh, ha ha, yeah, you caught me. That kind of fun (laughs) environment. But what happens if you're frustrated? Mm. They still don't get it. Mm. So then you get more angry, you frustrate even more. You do the slow, right now we've got it. And you think they've finally got it and they can't do it. Then it's like, how do you finish the day off? Because that's mm. a pretty crappy day to end the day going, oh, we couldn't do it. And the kid's feeling kind of crap. and like, Miserable, so, yeah. Yeah, so to me, it's, you have to find that balance because a lot of the very modern parents, mm. which I, frustrates me a lot, they'll go, oh, it's okay, it's okay. All right, go to sleep now. And I go, no, it's not okay. <laughs> you can't have a kid think it's okay, no. Mm. But where's the line, right? If yeah. I go full, like my parents, mm. like, sc- like, before I even go to bed, they'll scream at me, like my dad, like, they'll scream at me as I go to bed. You're a loser, you're worthless, you're not, you know, <laughs> I'm going to bed, like I'm a loser, <laughs> crying. Right? Oh, so where's Lordy. the balance? I would say, mm. tell them it wasn't good, okay? Let's be, let's be honest. Right? Yeah. Be honest with ourselves, it wasn't a good day. Absolutely. We cannot think it's okay, but mm. positive, right? Mm. The next day we'll come back and we will make it better, okay? Yep. Give them a high five. So you know, you know, yes, we shouldn't be feeling overjoyed. We shouldn't think it's okay, mm. but mm. we have that positive spirit to yes. come back tomorrow. Because you don't want a kid thinking, oh, it's okay to mess up all the time. No. You don't want that kind of losing mindset. You want a winning mindset. Yeah, yeah. But do you agree with what I said? Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. I think just thinking about it with, with Aaron, if, you know, it's certainly days in the practice week where things don't turn out the way they need to, um, uh-huh. and she'd be upset. Uh, the thing is, for one way to draw the line, and secondly, um, it's also the child, at least with Erin, what happens is if she does mess up, she, and we ask her to take a break, or we say that's it, that's enough for today, uh, she will be very reluctant to stop. She will still want to go at it. That's good, yeah. Until she, she gets it done. But we know for a fact that long day at school, She's got ballet, maybe. A, a ballet, <laughs> yeah, or the other extracurricular activities, she's obviously tired but she doesn't want to admit to it. And look, unfortunately on those days, it can get a little ugly. You know, she's, she's miserable, she, she cries. That does, that does happen. Um, but like you said, we, we have to sometimes force her to get off the piano. No, it's enough. enough Shut the enough. piano, yeah. enough is enough. Your brain is not of... working properly. You pretty much, can't. pretty much. Especially with a piece of a lot of sharps. <laughs> You're trying to get now like a patch of sharps. Absolutely. The, the tears start coming oh. down. It's so hard, I keep getting it wrong. Correct, yeah, yeah. absolutely. But the good thing is, as she's getting older, she can acknowledge that she's tired now. You know, you ask her, and then we, we, I'll, I'll ask her, you know, if I'm standing there going, are you tired? First she'll be like, no, I'm not. And then after a couple of times when she still doesn't get it, Yes, I am. Which is amazing because Aaron is the opposite to a lot of my boy students because Mm. a lot of times boys will find any reason to be lazy. (laughs) So if you asked me when I was young, like, oh, are you tired? Like, yes, let me get off and play with my toys, you know? So, but Aaron is so motivated. It's, are you tired? She's tired and no, I'm not tired. I want to keep going. She she wants to get it right. And I think even now her pet hate is to having to come back to something. She, she wants to get it right from the get-go. She wants okay. to, if the paper says, I should be getting it right after five times drill, I have to get it right after five times drill. That's that, amazing. Yeah. That kind of mentality. And it's good, but it's also bad where, you know, when it's well and truly over, she's tired, she can't do it. We need to tell, kind of force her to take a break. But it is getting better as she gets older. She acknowledges that it's not been great. She acknowledges that she's tired. And she also acknowledges that perhaps a break is a good thing we will have to revisit it. As much as she yeah. hates it, it's got to be done. 
I believe that's a really important topic, especially、mm. when your kids enter high school、mm. and they start having more sports. They、yep. start having more extracurriculars、mm. because you know our students in Muso, we actually tell them if you're in Muso, music has to be the priority. It can't be academic,、mm. or it has to be. You have to fifty-fifty. Yeah. So when you come home from school, don't do your homework first. Get、yeah. the practice out of the way, or wake up early. Get it out of the way、mm. before your homework, and that's because. I was in high school,、mm. and I knew that when I did my homework before my piano practice,、mm. it usually would take me thirty minutes. It took me an hour and a half,、mm. and I realized it's because <laughs> piano practice stimulates your brain so intensively、yes. that it's like hitting the gym. I realized, yeah, when you hit for the, the gym, brain. So have you ever, you know, you better hit the gym, and <clears> then <throat> you just sit there、mm. procrastinating for an hour because you just don't want to go. <laughs> Right. But then once you go and you've done it, it feels amazing,、mm. and you go, "I can't wait to do it again,"、mm. right?、Okay, But、cool. then the next time you do it, you procrastinate another hour before. So I realized <laughs> piano practice is the same thing.、Mm. Just get it out of the way.、Mm. And it's so funny. I would tell the students, "Let me guess. When it's time to to do your practice or whatever,、mm. it takes. You know, let's say it's time to do your homework first before、uh-huh. piano practice. It takes quite a while,、mm. right? Your homework,、mm. and they don't want to admit it, right? And the moms go. How did you know?、Like, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Every time piano practice comes after homework, the homework magically is so long, and then mum's like, "Oh, h- how did you know?" And like, <laughs> and I'm like, and sometimes it's to the point where it's so much homework where they don't have any time to practice anymore, and they're like, oh, "Are you a magician?" And I'm like, "No, it's because." And I say, "I'm sorry,、um, student, like whatever his or her name, usually the boys.、Yeah. I'm sorry to blow you under the bus, but <laughs> it's because he's lazy. He didn't need that much. He was." He was trying to delay. <laughs> he wasn't trying. He was delaying.、Yeah. He fooled you, mum.、Mm. Yeah, you, you thought he was really doing. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He、mm. was chilling, looking at his phone, looking at his、uh, watch or whatever, <laughs> playing around, <just> procrastinating, <laughs> finding. Any, it's it's so switch it up. You, know, you want to do well in music,、mm. do music practice first. Get it out of the way.、Mm. Then do your homework. Whatever's、mm. left, you know, before、mm. dinner, take a break.、Mm. Enjoy yourself. Go on your phone, chill, whatever. Yeah. After dinner, same thing. Smash out the rest of your piano practice. Afterwards, homework. Whatever's left, that's your break time.、Mm. And trust me, you'll start seeing great results.、Mm. And then the parents will come back next week and go, "I can't believe it! Like, all of a sudden, the homework takes half an hour to finish, <laughs> and he's done at nine p.m. before. You said to take ten thirty p.m. to finish,、mm. and now he's he's so motivated because now he'll smash it out. It looks you know possible, and now he's got an hour and a half to relax and、mm. enjoy himself.、Mm. And I even tell the high school kids when you you do well at the lesson, we give you Muse of the Month,、mm. which is when you, we put your name on the board for doing mm. well. Mm. We even let you have your phone or iPad、mm. before you sleep,、right. on the condition that at 11 p.m. or whatever your your set bedtime is, you gotta finish. Yeah. Because、yeah. we want you to have discipline. We don't want you growing up like a loser, like a lot、mm. of. Unfortunately, it happens a lot in Australia.、Mm. They got no discipline. They're in their mid twenties, my age, still gaming. Eight hours a day,、mm. so we we say that's the condition. If you if mom says stop, it's bedtime. You got to stop.、Mm. If you break that rule,、mm. then sorry, that iPad goes away for the rest of the week. Yeah, and I I actually tell the kids why this is beneficial for their life,、mm. how it's going to impact them in the future, and they all agree with it.、Mm. Absolutely,、so、they'll still whine and complain sometimes, but、oh. as long as they understand it, there's less complaining. Yeah, yeah. But do you agree with that kind of parenting yeah. style? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in general, absolutely. I think、um, with Erin, we do the same.、Um, Do you have a sticker process, or do you do rewards at home?、Uh, we do what、well, we don't.、Um, I, think, <laughs> I, I think we started. My 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 wife had sort of started as sort of a, a rewards of a program, but、um, I think、uh, we we don't actively police it per se.、Um, but it's kind of in the routine now, where they get back from school, they have a little snack, and then the first thing is.、Uh, To get piano practice out of the way. Great. So you don't do homework. Or no, no. Or are they too young to have homework? That's、yet? the thing. It's also because in、uh, primary school now they don't really get much homework. Right.、Okay. Um, but that's one reason. The other reason is knowing that sometimes the practice can take a little longer, especially with Erin as she progresses.、Um, we don't. Necessarily want them to be playing the piano towards that six seven p.m. or beyond that, just in case of the neighbors. Be, right. Yeah, and that, they'll be tired as well. And they'll be tired. So the more, as you mentioned just then, the brain intensive activities, try to get that done whilst they're still as fresh as they can be. I mean, school itself is tiring, running school lessons and whatnot. So try to park piano next to it, get that done, 
and then progress with everything else. That's right. Yeah. And it's a really hardcore topic, which is <clears throat> when they enter high school, <clears throat> and let's say you're in year seven and eight, and you got a test on Friday. Mm. Do we prioritize homework first, knowing that they're going to delay yeah. how much of homework they really need and not practice? You see, mm. but how would you interact with that? Oh. Or would you still say not piano practice first? Because I know that you don't need as much as you think you do. But maybe we'll cut down on the rules. We won't do three times. Maybe yeah, we just do two times. You know, that kind yeah, of thing. especially when it's closer. I think the one really good thing uh, that my wife and I both agreed on is some practice is better than no practice. You know, even say, for example, if it's supposed to be five, but because of whatever reason, uh, we've got an appointment or we, exams, for example, yeah. instead of five, we do at least two, two or three. Don't do the full thing. What do you mean two? Oh, you mean, you mean two some rules, right? The two uh, times rule. Correct, correct. So yeah. instead of, if, say, say, for example, if the five times rule for drilling. Or oh, for those who aren't following, Muso creates rules for kids. Mm. We aren't mm. your traditional piano teachers who say you have to practice four hours a day. We yes. think that's so stupid. Yeah. No, the, the reason not my why, hours. Not the my reason hours. why Muso <laughs> students can do so well is because we create rules for them. Mm. So um, Andrew would, was talking about the five times rule. Mm. So you do five mm. times right hand, left hand, and both hands. Mm. And sometimes if you do very well, the teacher will give you a perk. So he's mm. experienced it with Erin. You know, when she's doing well, I'll say, wow, you're so good now. Mm. We've got a competition in a month's time. Mm. If your practice is good, you can cut down to three. Yeah. Then after two weeks, if she's super, super good, I might even give another perk. Oh, maybe you can do two times booster. Just really good two times, move on. But if it's not good, do your three times. Correct. But if they start messing up a lot and it's obvious they've been slacking, sorry, my back friend, to one. back to five. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's really fun, fun for the kids. And mm. we find the efficiency is really high now. Mm. Like the music kids are doing a lot better than before when we used to give guidelines. Oh, you should practice two hours, three hours. I think the incentive is, logically, the the better you are, the lesser times you need to practice, the shorter your overall time it's is like homework. in front of the piano. And, <laughs> and we've got kids practicing an hour and a half mm. who play so much better than kids who are practicing two and a half sometimes mm. because mm. they're using those incentives. Mm. Yeah, so that's what he was referring to, cutting down on yeah. the rules if, if there's if, like a test. Yeah, if there's a test, yeah, yeah. I mean, less so now because of primary. And in all honesty, um, when Erin um, hits um, high school, uh, don't really know yet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what if your kid goes, no, the test is so important, I want to do it first, the study. Ooh. And you already know, okay, when she studies, we already know she's going to prolong mm. the study time. You already know, it's guaranteed, mm. right? Mm. How would you handle that? Oh. Or would you still say, oh no, you should, you know, because you don't want to upset Lawrence, you should still hop in there, do your, <laughs> you won't do your three times, or just do two times for these pieces. I, I would say, for now, that's probably what we'd do, to just basically good, yeah. shorten, I mean, like I said earlier, some practice is better than no practice. It's, it's, you, just, you just can't say, you know, they're both equally important. Um, and obviously we want them to excel as much as possible in both. In both, yeah. But again, you can't be too overbearing. I mean, what time do you, you want to keep them up till 12, 12 a.m. just so that they can squeeze everything in? So yeah. shorten it, uh, but still do it. Um, and then focus on whatever else needs to be done. If there's a test, exams. less rules. And that's yeah. exactly what I would do if I have a kid. Because we're getting, a, more and more high school kids, right? Because mm. Muso has been around since 2021. So mm. now the kids are going from primary to high school. Yeah. And before it wasn't really a question of topic, but now it's becoming the main topic mm. where we go, what's the priority? And parents are like, oh, academics are priority. I'm like, but you want them to keep going with piano. <laughs> oh yes, and, like, oh, and you want them to finish diploma. Yes, and I'm like, you're being so unrealistic right now. <laughs> like, you're dreaming, you know, it's not smart at all. You know, mm. you have to understand the psychology of your kids. Mm. If you let them do homework first, there won't be time for piano practice, I can assure you, or very limited time. And when they finally do hop on the piano at 9 p.m., like rest assured, that mm. practice, you might as well don't practice. It's useless. You're going to be tired. It's the most useless thing ever to hop yeah. on there at 9 p.m. It's just, you know, <laughs> yeah. as good as finger exercise. And you, guys, you can't focus. That's the, exactly. that's the important thing. I think I'm hopeful that, and again, I don't know, but I'm hopeful that, you know, when Erin uh, hits high school, that... Um, by then, she'd be at an age where she's a little bit more mature, a little bit more understanding, and a little bit she'll be she'll be more aware of what her limits are, and it kind of then introduces the self time management thing. You know mm. how quickly you take and do homework. Correct. Whatever. You know so, and it is self time management discipline. I mean, now at this age, discipline is certainly something that we have to help her with. Hence the right. whole, we need to be there with her to practice, making sure that she's doing everything that she needs to be doing. 
um, that kind of stuff. But as she progresses, my I guess hopefully my expectation is she'll know from the lesson notes, okay, this is what I need to do, but I've got this test coming up tomorrow five times. I'll try to nail it in two. If I really can't do it, I'm not going to push myself to complete the just five. Just get it two done just and get move on. And move on. Yeah, do two times, drill a few spots. That's what I would do with my kids. Yeah. It's like doing, you know, it's so funny because it's a bit of hypocrisy involved, right? Mm. The parents will say, yeah, but academics are the most important. And I'm like, okay, your kid is a basketball, you know, state, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, state, right? And yeah. she's like, yeah, yeah. They got, what, two, three trainings a week? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So do you skip it when there's a test? And like, oh, no. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's not going to be the next NBA, great NBA player, right? Like, oh, no. <laughs> but yet, <laughs> you, it's, it's priority is to go to basketball. Mm. Yet when it comes to piano practice, all of a sudden, mm. that's not priority. So I told the parents, like, if you're going to do, you know, kids should have two intensive hobbies. Mm. Three is a bit pushing it for a high school, but two at least. Mm. Take it seriously. Yeah. You've got this one life, right? Take yeah. it seriously. Yeah and dedicate to you to your hobbies. Mm. You'd be surprised where it takes you in the future Correct. and how it benefits you. Because if other people are lazy beans, right, coming from school and all they do is just do the homework, prolong it, lazy, whatever. Mm. But your kid has that discipline. Okay, I got piano priority first mm. and now I'm going to do my study mm. and now I got basketball priority, go home, do a bit of piano, cut down on the rules. Yeah. And you'd be surprised, like when they grow up, they'll be so much more productive yeah. than the lazy bean kid, right? Because their brain is <laughs> mentally trained at a young age to mm. want to achieve more. Mm. So talking about that, I want to know a bit about your parenting style, like mm. your parents now, not you. Okay, right. right. So oh, gosh. <laughs> you look at how Muso promotes this whole, you know, fun, mm. but also discipline at the same time environment. Yes. What about your par parenting style? Was there a lot of communication when you were young? Y yes. Um, I mean, especially with, with my mum. Um, my mum was, uh, was always there at home because um, when... Uh, when I was growing up, it was mum who looked after the household, um, you know, myself and my sister. Was it so, common in Malaysia for w the mum to stay at home and the dad to go out? Oh, I... <clears throat> or, or was it to that stage where both parents had to work to make um, a living? I think at the time, at least for me, I was fortunate enough that mum could stay at home to look after us. And, um, you know, my, my dad would obviously be working uh, to support the family. So that was, that was fortunate that we had mum there um, right, to okay. cook and to look after us. Um, and also, um, back then when I was having, because I used to play the piano as well, uh, when I was having piano lessons, it was uh, the teacher would come to the house. Right. But you and your wife, you yeah. both work full-time or part-time or? At the moment, uh, full-time, yeah. So Aaron is good at, okay, so this is good, this is good for me to tell the audience. Yeah. So Aaron is really good at piano, has fun parents, both parents are full-time <laughs> work. Yeah. And Museum <laughs> has a policy where up until 10, mm. Parents have to be there the entire practice. Is that something you are almost there, most of the practice you most, there? Most of them, yeah, most of right. them. That's, that's why, admittedly, there are days when I'm, I'm either late coming back from work, right. um, but that's why I check in with Erin, and you know, my wife lends an ear as well to, to listen and, and will let me know, hmm, this one didn't go separate hands. Is that supposed to be right? All right, okay. <laughs> so that really, so that's, there that's, should be a big emphasis on both parents involved in the music journey. Do you yeah, agree? I mean, we, we, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I, mean, I find parents when it's just one parent involved, sometimes it doesn't go very well. They don't last very long. The, let's say the mum wants to push really hard and mm. be good at music. The dad mm. is like, no, why do we have to push the kids? I want them to be lazy <laughs> potatoes. We just want to do what they want in life. And then I'm like, and then mm. not surprisingly, within two years, they're gone. <laughs> it's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one, especially when you're working full time. You, I think, you know, for uh, you know, a family, uh, especially mum and dad, you try as much as you can. Everything is a try. You try to complement yourselves, each other, as, as best, as much as possible. Great. Um, for the benefit of, obviously, of your the child. Kids. And you need both parents to agree with the music journey. Because yes. if one doesn't want to push, that's key. and the other one wants to push, it doesn't go well. It, yeah, it can be difficult. It absolutely can be difficult. I mean, that, the whole basketball scenario. I mean, dad may go, I want basketball's basketball. more important. Or, or mum may go, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where do you, there has to be some middle ground. Yeah. So. You need teamwork from both parents. You Did your parents hit you often? Because we grew up in the old Chinese style. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so. Look, absolutely, <clears throat> but not without reason. 
So, you know, right. it, was, it wasn't, you know, abuse <clears throat> or anything, but yeah. not without reason. Uh, you know, I admittedly wasn't your uh, ideal, kid. <laughs> ideal kid for sure. You know, I was, I had my, I think we've, the majority of us can probably relate to re rebellious years, um, growing up in high school, that transition, making friends, uh, your studies, where do you balance it? How do you balance it? So, yeah. It, but by you getting hit so much, mm. did you think, okay, this is the right way. When I grow up, I'm going to hit my kids. Did you ever feel that or not? Or did you go the opposite way where you go, no, I'm not going to uh, hit my kids. I mean, I'm probably, yeah, I'm probably a little, still a little old school uh, in a way where um, I do think that um, hitting is abs an absolute no-no. Um, you know, even even my parents now, for example, as they sort of see uh, what you're doing, they, see, go, they see, start realizing, oh wait. Well, they'll say, no, no, don't, don't hit. Don't <laughs> but they used to hit you. Again, not not for no reason. Right, again, right. not for no reason. But yeah, right, okay. it, it, it's always the case. Um, but I, I do believe there still needs to be a little discipline involved. There has to um, be. There has to be. But um, a lot more conversations need to happen. A yep. lot more conversations need to happen, especially for this generation and really future generations with yeah. everything that they interact with. Uh, we never had laptops yeah. easily, access, social media, social media. And the internet. I mean, a lot of more old school parents argue mm. about, oh, it's because, you know, there's all this awareness now, it's hard to discipline your kids. It wasn't as good as the old good old days we could hit them and make them <laughs> excel faster. <laughs> I actually had to think about it. Mm. And I'm thinking the way I discipline you know, my kids or well, my students. Mm. I don't have a wife yet, so I mm. can't say <laughs> my kids. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> right, my students, which I call my kids. Mm. And I realized like, when I have kids, I wouldn't hit them. Mm. But I'll definitely show frustration because I yeah, know how to axe it out when necessary. Absolutely. I know how to communicate it, to help them understand why it's important to do well. Mm. And it's very conversational. And I realize, I, I'm not sure if you noticed, but I ask a lot of questions sometimes. Mm. So you when do. they don't do well, I'll go, you know, oh, why? Why, don't, why do you think you didn't do well? Mm. I'll stimulate them. Oh, why do you think this part wasn't good? You know, mm. I pick their brain. Oh, finger three wasn't curved. I realize it's the same when you discipline a kid. You mm. should actually ask questions because you're trying to stimulate their brain. Mm. Uh, this is just my theory and my perspective. When mm. I was young, I was kind of stupid. Because if your whole scenario is, I'm doing this because mm. if I don't do it well, because my, my dad was really hardcore actually. Mm. I, would, I remember I got, I got hit mm. for not coming first. Mm. This is very, very harsh. And you could argue, you know, oh, Lawrence, that's why you're so good at what you do now and you're so you know, amazing at piano, whatever. But, you know, mm. I agree, mm. but I wasn't very intelligent when I was young mm. because if your whole narrative is I'm going to practice like crazy because if I mess up, I don't do well in academic or do well mm. in, in here, mm. there's severe punishments when I go home. Yeah. The, the question of why am I doing it doesn't yep. become a question. I didn't even know that, oh, pushing hard is good for your future yeah. because when I grow up, I'm going to be so ambitious and have all these goal settings. Mm. And mm. Mm. that wasn't even a question in my head. My whole head was, I don't want to get beat up. I don't want to get beat up. Like, like it was hardcore. We're not talking about your average slap, by the way. We're talking about, you know, 10 minutes of continuous hitting. Mm. Should you not perform well or should you, you know, get a bad report, you know? Right. Of so course. I'm not sure how hardcore your parents were. <laughs> I mean, look, certainly there would be disappointment if, you know, you don't come first or if I didn't come first or, uh, you know, didn't uh, get a distinction, um, you know, in, in my piano or whatever. But they, they I guess they, they wasn't hitting per se. Again, as I mentioned, yes, absolutely, you know, there was hitting, but not without good reason. And yeah. good reason didn't include <laughs> not coming first and, you know, and, and stuff like that. It was more misbehaving and uh, absolutely not listening to what your parents tell you to do. So you had, I would say you had pretty good parents for a Chinese Malaysian at the time. Yeah, like yeah. Pretty understanding, not ruthless style. I mean, Malaysia is pretty hardcore. It's a conservative. It can be. It can conservative be. conservative country. You know, I've been there. I've seen, you know, it's, it's pretty conservative. Like it's getting more modern nowadays. Oh no, absolutely. absolutely. For sure. I, yeah. I, I think it's, um, it's a generation thing, you know, less of, um, uh, I, I would say having friends um, outside of uh, you know, Australia and Malaysia, you know, in the UK, uh, for example, it's, I kind of think it's more a generation thing in right. terms of um, how each parent deems they should be or thinks they should be parenting their own kids. Yes, it does depend on how your upbringing was, it um, does, but, yeah. but, but you learn from it. You, you sort of, to a certain extent, you pick the good, you leave the bad, 
and you throw your own spin on it. I think parenting is a learning journey. Absolutely. Because I remember my, even my dad, as ferocious as he was, mm. by high school, he actually took a step back. Mm. Like late high school, he realized that it mm. wasn't going well. His crazy style of education was almost tearing the family apart. Mm. And the moment he took a step back, it was weird. The family was like splitting apart and then mm. it just came back. Mm. And then we became close again. So. Mm. Parenting is a learning journey. Right? It is, yeah. it is. Like if you see my dad now, you would be like, he's the chillest, coolest, <laughs> nicest guy ever. You would have no idea what he was. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I was scared to just look at him you know, when I was I young. Mean, yeah. I, mean, like, I mean, likewise, I mean, with, with, with my dad, I mean, because my mom was always home. So, you know, I was, you know, I could probably say that I'm closer to mom because she's always there with us. Right. And dad would come home after work. Um, but the other thing is, if, if, if I was to do something wrong, and it had to get escalated to dad. Ooh. That's when you'd be scared, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's it. I mean, that, that was how that style was at the time, I think, in general. But I think it's, it's also- Good cop, bad cop, one parent. Yeah. In, in a way, in a way. But at the end of the day, it, it was for my benefit, for, for the children's benefit. And I guess with the age thing about getting into high school kind of thing, I think it was also perhaps, and I'm just thinking out loud, the whole mentality of that a growing bamboo kind of thing, when it's young, you can still ply it, you can still shape it, but once it grows to a certain age where it's hard and you know, the, the plant's gonna go this way. You're not going to be able to do anything unless you chop the thing down. Yeah. So why, why still interfere with it? Just, you know, you've done what you can when they're at a tender young age, You've done, you've done what you can. In high school, let them grow. Let like, them grow. I think let primary, them be their own person. Primary school is when to push. Like, that's why I really am not supportive of parents who don't want to push their kids at a young age. I'm mm. going, no, this is like, we even say to the team, the Muso team, mm. like, this age, like five to eight, you can be you know, fun and pushy. Mm. Eight to 11, push hard. <laughs> this is the age <laughs> to push because mm. once they enter high school, you can't push as hard anymore. Mm. Make them have that feeling of achievement, right? When they achieve something, get a good report, oh, good job, and they feel good. Um, do well in piano competition or performance. Like when you say do well, we don't mean winning. We just mean yeah. you perform your best. You your and best. They feel like you actually did well. They feel good. So they have this kind of like a, it's like a, a drug, you know, addiction to <laughs> achievement. And, and then in high school, it's not so much you say, oh, you go off and you know, fly now. No, no, it, you're still a manager, but mm. as a supportive figure. You're pushing yeah. them on the sidelines, yeah. yeah. but they should start having that personal drive yeah because also understanding as they get older they themselves are becoming adults and then they need their own mind yeah correct anyways that's the end and thank you so much oh good now you guys get a better idea of one of our music parents <laughs> the ideas behind it and there's a lot of key takeaways from today right mm. which is a lot of parents we get it work is hard mm. absolutely and unfortunately you know how i said like even boy students or actually I can't stereotype no. both I just say boys depends on the child more of my boys students tend to be like that, but I would say kids in general mm. they want to find a reason to be lazy mm. so if adults as well you know you, you work full time both you and your wife mm. you could have easily been lazy and be like oh you know I can't push my kid well let's not go to muso let's not push them because mm. we're so busy anyways you know you could have done that if you want to yeah but you guys chose to go no the mm. development of our kids is the most important thing ever. Absolutely. Despite our busy schedules, I don't care if I'm home exhausted. Mm. I don't care if I had, you know, I don't know, maybe an argument at work. I'm still gonna go home and be the best parent I can. You try. And support my kids. Yeah. Right, so I think this is a very key takeaway from today. Thank you so much. All good, and pleasure. And we'll definitely have you back home very soon. Thank you, thank right. you for having me. No worries, thank Thanks. you.